It's a good thing we're going back to a horror movie, since last week's episode was on a modern movie. That clearly means that all episodes this month were for modern or religious films, and that the Halloween H2O and Jason Goes to Hell episodes no longer exist. Thirty years ago, the world was graced with A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors, a film conceived by Wes Craven to be the final film in the franchise. <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. After the critical disappointment of Elm Street 2, New Line Cinema was unsure of where to take the series, but the film was put in the right hands with Craven, co-writer Frank Darabont, and director Chuck Russell, who would later direct The Blob Remake and The Mask. The plot revolves around the last of the Springwood children, who are the kids of the parents who burned Freddy alive, all of whom have been driven so mad that they're cooped up in a mental institution and have to use their dream powers to fight back against Freddy. The film also marks a bridging point between the darkness of the earlier entries and the darkly comedic and special effects heavy later sequels. It's a series high point in terms of audience and critical reviews, but it's still a slasher movie, which means I don't much care for it. What is this New Line logo? Go back to the one that set me up for the possibility of viewing a snuff film. This movie begins with an Edgar Allan Poe quote, and not to mention... That's not a Dawkins lyric. Here's the real reason the movie was made. Every third part in a slasher movie gets a free cake. Although I think this cake has flies in it. Eh, it's free. But something's throwing me off with these credits. <laughs> Does the horror music really work when the names on the screen are Dick Cavett and Zsa Zsa Gabor? The film is also one of the first film roles for Patricia Arquette, who plays Kristen. She got the part by winning this Plaster House competition. It may say that Angelo Badalamenti does the music, but that's not what it sounds like. either this or he's back, the man under the fedora. Jail. Excuse me, young lady, but this is a scorpion household! Kristen is still having awful nightmares. She's being forced to build model houses for a horror convention table. <laughs> well, here's her problem. She doesn't have a proper bedroom. I guess all the improvements the Walsh family made to this house were for nothing. This neighborhood has gone to shit. Hi, what's your name? My name is This Is A Fucking Trap! Eh, the doors are open, and maybe there's some antique cans of new coke in here. That might be worth something, if you can avoid the serial killer. This is where he takes us. Come on, we're going. Ah! Ah! Well, duh. Look, it's nice that you're rescuing the girl-sized doll, but you could have actually saved the actual girl. Worst part is when she stumbles into a theater showing a screening of Geostorm. With Dick Cavett in the credits, that makes me think this is part of the Beetlejuice universe, and that Adam and Barbara are going a little overboard here. Can't you all live together in peace? But at least she gets a nice vacation. Oh hey, it's Larry Fishburne. Whatever happened to that guy? One of the men in charge here is Dr. Neil Gordon, played by Craig for the last time I'm not Bill Maher Wasson. Also on staff is Dr. Elizabeth Sims, who has resting Nurse Ratchet face. There seems to be a problem here. For the last time, I don't want to do CSI Cyber anymore! Jesus Christ, Larry, just give her a Cowboy Curtis autograph and end this! She begins singing, One, Two, Freddy's Coming for You, which summons an appearance from a familiar face. 
Never sleep again. Oh, I was hoping it would be Grady. Heather Langenkamp returns as Nancy Thompson, now a therapist, which is what I'm gonna need after Neil's story about kids cutting their eyelids off. What was that nursery rhyme all about? That was just uh, something that the kids say to keep the boogeyman away. That's great for keeping Michael Myers away, but what's it gonna do about Freddy? And to make matters worse, I think they're filming the devil inside nearby. You get that shitty found footage movie out of here. There's other familiar faces here too. There's Corey Feldman, Baby Yafet Kodo, Jonathan Brandis, and Victoria Jackson. Speaking of familiar, huh, I could have swore the house I lived in was much bigger than this. As Dr. Bill types out the new rules for the faculty members, Kristen needs to learn to draw another house. You know Grady was killed in a house, too. I still don't know about this hospital. <laughs> well, now why did they put her psych ward room in there? The house has a few upgrades, though, such as motion sensor lights. Unfortunately, there's also a gigantic ant problem. Oops, never mind. That's not an ant. That's a giant dick! Phallical Freddy is the best way to get other people into your dreams. Most effective Z-Quill commercial I've ever seen! It's here that Nancy sees the face she's been dreading for years. Oh my god. Holy shit, it's Nightmare Fetty! Anyway, after breakfast... I used to live in this house. It was when she was much tinier. Turns out Kristen has the power to pull people into her dreams. It's a great way to prank a bus driver and cause a tragic accident. After Jeffrey Beaumont's mom talks about how her son found an ear, we get to know more about these kids. I thought you said this was supposed to be straight talking here. Hey, so he took a jump. At least he wasn't sticking needles in his arm with a bunch of low lives. Save it, Kincaid. You know what these kids need? Whiskey. It's really gutsy of a slasher film to address issues such as teen mental health, psychological scarring, and suicide. But Freddy movie, so whatever, harumph. They even have to take shifts in order to keep each other awake. And the doctors take shifts on who gets a nice Irish coffee and who gets a beer. My mother passed away. She uh, died in her sleep. That was after she was pulled through a door. Maybe you should have ordered an onion blossom instead of a bowl of forks. Any other ideas? You want me to prescribe an experimental psychoactive drug to a bunch of suicidal teenagers? Just until we get things under control. <laughs> what? It'll be hilarious! These two, however, don't take sleep shifts. It's because they hate each other. And his dream comes with amazing special effects. And the absolute worst puppet show you've ever been to. The Thunderbirds were right to use real puppets. Have a nice troll there, so. See, Kincaid wants him dead, probably because of his snoring. Okay, here's your problem. None of your doors are locked. No one thinks about the patients being dragged around by their veins until it's too late. and his puppets were immediately shipped off to Charles Band. Anyway, after breakfast... I want us to talk about what happened last night. I ordered the Coors Light when in my heart I really wanted a Goose Island. Any questions? Everyone is very upset. They're petitioning to replace Dr. Bill Maher with someone who will simply tell them everything they want to hear. Elizabeth, I'm prescribing hypnocil. It's a dream suppressant. I know what it is. I just can't believe what I'm hearing. That's easy for her to say. Her daughter Susan survived the Carrie incident. We need to keep the patients in a prison hole. That's the way to go. Ain't gonna dream no more. I'll 
That's not how the Freddy song goes. Maybe they should all be in the hole for safety. Got the keys to heaven, baby. What? The dispensary. I am talking clean pharmaceutical high, a night at club meth. Ugh, I guess Freddy isn't the grossest one here. It's important that even fake Victoria Jackson stays in the nut house for the rest of her life. There's even Dick Cavett reruns. He and Zsa Zsa Gabor must be promoting Elm Street 3. Samsung hadn't quite gotten their kinks worked out yet, but can you think of a better way to descramble 80s porn? Stop the prime time, bitch! True, she was on Friends. A 1979 series that happened to also be called Friends. <laughs> Clearly a suicide. At least Jennifer got a funeral. All Philip got was, does anyone want to talk about this? Jennifer even gets creepy people. I've seen you before, uh, sister. Mary Helena. Evil! Alright folks, this is kind of a bummer. Let's head out to Applebee's. Ooh, we can get an onion blossom this time. Uh, I was just talking to... To hell. Doesn't matter. You were talking to an invisible nun. It kind of matters. Nothing like the death of the second patient to set the mood for a romantic candlelit dinner. Craig's a little stressed. The night before, he witnessed someone being murdered while he was spying on them. Nancy, however, knows what these kids are talking about. He's horribly burned. He has razors on his right hand. Wrong! He wears a leather jacket and has a power drill guitar. She tells them that she was almost killed by Freddy, which I still want to know how she got away from that. But these kids are very important. You are the last of the Elm Street children. Five more sequels to follow. The kids learn to use the power of their dreams against Freddy. They could become dream warriors, if you will. Don't worry, we got this from the set of Exorcist II The Heretic, but let's try to use it to our advantage instead of being stupid with it. Sorry. That's okay, we'll try again. Everybody take five. Well, I appreciate that it doesn't instantly work. Oh, I guess it did instantly work. Uh, it was either fall asleep or watch Exorcist II again. Now we get to see all of their dream powers. In my dreams, I can walk. My legs are strong. FAKER! Plus, he becomes a wizard master. And in Kristen's dreams, she can have a stunt double. Kincaid can up his hospital bill. Plus... In my dreams, I'm beautiful. <gasps> and bad. Mmm. I like this dream. <laughs> I guess not every kid is here. Someone's got to get laid in one of these movies. <laughs> Worth it. Can there be one mental institution that doesn't have a ward dedicated to sacrificing someone to Kalima? Lucid dreaming may be very cool, but smoke inhalation most certainly is not. Listen to them down there, are 2 they're dying! Who will save them? What's going on in here? Failed attempt at an orgy. Neil and Nancy are fired even before they could break the hospital's three suicides in your out policy. I'm sorry, Neil. I'm afraid you brought it on yourself. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you're a bitch! Neil cleaned out all of his stuff. He only took pictures with the kids that he knew were gonna die. But he can't leave without going somewhere scary. Okay, those birds were just waiting there to fuck with someone. And he's gotta say goodbye to Sister Mary Heebie Jeebies. The sister is wondering how through all of this, Bill could still consider himself to be an atheist. Plus, there's some backstory about Freddy's mom, Amanda Krueger. The young girl on the staff 
was accidentally locked in here over the holidays. She was raped hundreds of times. God damn it, stop cutting back to me every time something horrifying happens. Joey is still in a coma, and now Freddy has a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. What the hell? It's not even Christmas. The plan is to find Freddy's remains, and there's only one man who knows where they are. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> well, if it isn't my little girl. Now, I was hoping it'd be Grady's dad. While Nancy's dad is on his booze date, someone needs to get back to the hospital immediately. The Will It Fit host won't give the pendulum back. But if Neil hangs out with John Saxon a little longer, maybe he can get his Enter the Dragon poster signed. Nancy is the only one who can save the kids. They're really frazzled. They agreed with Dr. Bill Maher on most things, but they won't get over that one thing that they don't. Freddy's body, however, is in a junkyard. It was in his will to be burned alive and for his remains to be put in the back of a 79 Chevy. Anyway, back to the ass kicking. Let's go kick the motherfuckers ass all over dreamland. Yeah! Um, excuse me, this is a rehabilitation seminar? This was back when we had to rely on this method to fall asleep. If they waited a few years, they could have simply gotten a copy of Elm Street 5. Good, we're all in the hole and safe. How do we find him, Kristen? <laughs> well, don't go that way! What the fuck, is this movie starting over? Excuse me, young lady, but this is a scorpion household! Shit, even my jokes are starting over. Something different has to happen. I said, where's the fucking bourbon? Did actress Priscilla Pointer choose all of her 80s roles on whether someone says, where's my bourbon? Now they're off to fight Freddy. If she loses, not only will she die, but she'll be cast in that 80s show. This is what Freddy Krueger gets for pissing off the cast of Savage Streets. Let's get high. And thus, the Just Say No campaign was born. And so was arm fucking. This guy's about to get his legs broken because he owes Freddy 20 bucks. While this may look painful, trust me, it's gonna crack your back and feel magnificent. In the name of Loris, Prince of Elves, Demon Be Gone! <laughs> Nerds! And now we must all thank Freddy for canceling young Sheldon. Let's hug it out! Our friends are dying! Yo, I thought I heard voices. <laughs> Kool-Aid man, what are you doing here? Meanwhile, in the Major Tom music video, Freddy's bones are here somewhere. It really lighting a cigarette. A little insensitive, don't you think? You're about to attend a funeral. One that's long overdue. Good, so Philip is finally getting a funeral. Oh, hey, we found Joey. He's just getting a good steam. These mental institution spas are fucking serious. Look, guys, maybe you should just wait for Freddy's bones to be buried. This is getting really dangerous. The souls of the children. Give me strength. And he's pregnant! How long does it take to bury bones? Oh, god damn it. Can you at least wait until after the movie to start the music video? You idiot. This wasn't Freddy's bones. We just resurrected a fucking deadite. <laughs> He'll be back. See, now you know why you should have brought Simon Belmont with you. And then the others find a fun house that's actually worth paying $5 a ticket. No! Great. Seven years of bad sequels. Now they can all go home and get a good night's rest. Daddy? You crossed over. Nancy, what do you think is going to happen here? Oh, well, I thought we would actually see them go get breakfast. 
and all it took was for Freddy to be stabbed with his own glove, his bones buried, and then splashed with a hundred proof holy water. But nothing will stop future sequels. I won't let you die. I won't let you. I'm gonna dream you into a beautiful dream. She'll be back. Unfortunately, we don't see John Saxon's funeral because he was also buried in a 79 Chevy. And someone invited Ed McMahon. Must have been Dick Cavett. Yes! Damn it, sister, will you stop ruining funerals? You were his mother. Neo's gonna bang your mom, bro! After he sleeps for two whole weeks. Um, fire hazard! While the script rewrite by Chuck Russell and Frank Darabont changed a lot of things, including making the movie less dark and more quippy, plus taking out a romance between Neil and Nancy, Elm Street 3 is still a very highly acclaimed sequel, with critics spotlighting its spectacular special effects and dream sequences, and it was a box office success as well, pretty much guaranteeing that despite this film's intent on being the final film in the series, a mere one year later there would be a night Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Elm Street 4 brings back the power team of Jesse and Grady, who return to Springwood to teach a high school softball team to use their powers to beat Freddy to death with a bunch of steel bats. I wish that were true. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash stonedgremlinproductions. Follow us on Twitter at the Cinema Snob, or check out our homepage at thecinemasnob.com.